Time flies when you're having fun. We're already getting stuck into our final game of the day between Into the Breach and Fnatic. And we'll test up one of the rosters first. We'll talk about Fnatic first. Fabian, if you'd please like to introduce us to this roster. Yeah, Fnatic, they've actually had quite a surprising game because I think that they played very good for their first game. They had high highs, low lows, but honestly, they look like a roster that has a lot of potential and a lot of future where they can shape this team into be a very, very, very good one. And we've got a clip of them because we thought there was a genius play going on. I don't know. I thought it was genius. Did you think it was I genius? I think it was yes. We thought it was well. genius. So we're just going to set the scene here. Fnatic are playing on the bank basement and G2, they've got about 38 seconds left to execute. Let's start rolling this clip. Now, the important player in this clip, it's going to be Deepak. The reason it's important for me is previously he challenged up the side of the stairs, didn't find a kill, cost his team. He gets it down. What does he do, Fabian? He runs down Dirt Tunnel. Yeah, he goes to hide. And what is the reaction from G2? Because how often do you see this, right? They pick up Banya and they decide that, well, we can't go for a normal server take anymore. We have to try something else. And if you pause the clip for me, Jack, and you give me the red arrows, I'll show you right what happens. Two players rotate straight here. Virtue will drop the hatch. And then we will have Uno on the side pushing deep. And they just decide to, we have no other choice. We have to go aggressive. Yeah, they go aggressive. They drop themselves into sight. But remember Deepak, we told you about Deepak. So look what happens when we drop them into sight. There's lots of players inside of sight. And Fabian, if you do the red arrow, there's lots of defenders this way from Fnatic. And look at Deepak, he's in Dirt Tunnel. This causes a huge issue for G2. Yeah, they have no idea what's going on. This is not a coherent unit from G2 anymore. They have to be worried about everything. We will see Alamau here. He will look back towards Deepak. He will kill him, sure. But it's not about the kill or the position. It's about all the chaos that Fnatic is creating for G2. They have no idea how to do this. Yeah, that's why that play was so genius. It gave those guys the opportunity in a bad win condition, realistic, yeah. play for Fnatic to actually win out the round. And this is really good signs if you're a Fnatic fan, I think, because genuinely, last year wasn't your year, but this year, there's some really good signs. Now, and I don't know about you, but didn't we have a clip of Fabian we liked? It is about ITB, but we did like it. Yeah, I recall that indeed. Of other opponents, it was last year, I think, stage two of Europe League. Fabian had a pretty stern talking about a specific player on the side of Interbreach, but we have the clip, and we'll have a look at it. Brutally honest, like no one needs to step up massively because we saw another heartbreaking performance from him. And like we're looking at, he maybe has one or two, three games left of his career at this point if he doesn't step up. Because <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> brutally honest. Because how many chances will you have in EUL when you you completely mess up stage one and then you come into stage two? If he keeps this up, I'm telling him as a just honestly, he needs to step up if he wants to continue playing because. Teams don't give him a chance if he performs this poorly and then keeps on doing so. He needs to step up. Fabian, we've seen you giving stern talks to players behind them as a coach. Now you're doing it on the stage. Has it had its effects? Yeah, I mean, it's not because of this speech I had, but it's more of it like he's actually picked it up, not from me maybe, but he's honestly just taken a step up that is just so necessary for him. As a Swedish person, I know I'm Swedish as well, it feels good when Swedish players are doing well. And the step up he's taken is just generally, yeah, the stats aren't crazy, but the yeah. step up is massive in terms of the impact he has on the game, both the entry work and also just overall, he's playing much better. Yeah, and I think his coach and his team have appreciated that. Like you said, the stats still aren't crazy. 0.91 rating across, you know, 158 rounds. Still not amazing, but that performance to almost double your rating, to sort those entries out, to increase your KPR, it's actually really good for his team. And I know Creed is in that primary entry role now, but his step up across that, you know, it wasn't directly since you called him out. <laughs> I like might have had a factor. It's all me. Yeah, it will all be you. It always is always you. You, you, you. <laughs> yeah, three world last But that improvement in that player has been nothing short of sensational. Yeah, but also speaking to Kenny yesterday in the interview about the pickups that they have, we'll bring the roster in in its full total. Uh, we see that these well, pickups for them have been really exciting. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, we mentioned him there, Creed's on a, and Kenny called it. It's not a natural role for him on the attack necessarily as the primary entry. And the same with Oscar, actually. Going into a support role for Oscar, um, when he's not necessarily known as a support player. But, you know, I think if you look at any team right now, what they're saying is you want one hard spot and, and four flexes. 
And I think they've got that nice balance, though. They have a very good balance. We have both played a lot with Oscar. We've played a lot with Creed's. And yep. we know what quality players they are. Because a lot of the game recently has been just about the, all the mechanics. First of all, they are very good mechanically, way better than we are. But they are also actually incredibly intelligent players. Yeah. And we were pr praising their pickups last year. Like, picking up Astra, I think, was massive for that roster. Yes. When we saw him the first game day, I said, oh, Astra's going to do incredible things for this roster. And I feel like every pickup they've had has that feeling to me inside like they're gonna do incredible because they are just that good of players i'm not kidding this step up in eul that all these teams have done with their rosters have just been uh, there's not not a number i cannot put a name to it it's just absurd how much better everybody is and itb know that it's about a journey and it's a long-term yeah. journey they knew that for this roster you know but way back when when it was first you know a roster and it's just these incremental little step ups that they're going for on that long term vision. I really like to see the map for this specific best of one as well, because these two teams, despite it being different under different organizations, have faced off against each other quite a few times already in this year. But for our last game of the day, it's looking like we're going back to Shelley. Yeah, we are. And it's a curious one for me. And the reason it's curious is actually ITB didn't really play Shelley last year. They weren't really comfortable on it. It was one where they played against weaker opposition. However, they've chose to bring it out. I noticed they didn't ban it yesterday. They've not banned it again today. They've chose to bring it out for this stage. So it's kind of a new map in their pool for this stage. Against Fnatic, it makes so much sense because the core of this roster, of the Fnatic roster, previously tried playing Chalet a lot and should have been good at it, but actually really struggled at it in EUL. However, obviously Fnatic have changed their team as well. So that theory might not necessarily play out in the server because if Fnatic brought it into their pool, it could be the counter back of them. And I just want to see the speed from both these teams now. I want to see them take that aggression and rely on the individual performance in combination with the intelligence from their team, because I do think that they both have that. We've seen a lot of defender favored conversations, but I think Chalet is still one of those maps that isn't. I think it's still attacker favored. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just excited to see, can they bring that speed and that violence, momentum? <laughs> they, can they do all of that stuff? I think they can because both of these rosters are massively upgraded. We will have to wait and see because for one more time today, we'll get to bring our casters back in to get ourselves going for this final match of the day. As we said, we welcome back Hap and Fluke. How excited are we for this final game? <laughs> Sorry, I was just playing with the camera. We're just being <laughs> Very excited. <It's> <laughs> We're just being friends. It's like that. It's like that painting where they like point to each other. And and I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm very, yes, I'm very excited for this game. <laughs> I, I, I swear we could try and make a like a love heart or something. Oh, I don't yeah. know. I'll, I'll, I'll just leave so you guys don't oh, you can do it oh, on your oh, own. Oh, sorry. Wait, that way. I hand eye coordination. Do I need to be the Yeah, it has like, to be I'm you still <laughs> Yo, you oh, should yeah. Fabian, please yeah. join us for this. It'll be so I, I don't cool. Know. I don't know. No, no. we're not gonna do no. it. Let's talk about the That is that is a bit of a shame. You have to like salute hat. There we go, there we go, there we go. It's not really a salute. What are you guys? Okay, this is kind of, kind of, we got it. We'll try it again. We'll get some practice data for that and we'll try it again. But please, I don't know which hand it is. It's... <laughs> for this final game of the day, take us to Chalet. We will. We return our way to Chalet this time with a different flavor, I think, in mind. Uh, there's an expectation of how every single game goes that you get into in Siege. For me, Fnatic stepped up expectation yesterday. They obviously demonstrated great play and great ideas. But where are they going to be against the roster where there might not be as much known about their opponents? Luckily, Chalet has been shown uh, very recently, though, by Into the Breach. We have a uh, an 8-7 win against Team 86 in the Malta Cyber Series. And we also have another Chalet 7-3 victory against Team Valor. Now, those obviously aren't the teams that are in the European League, so it's always a bit wondering how much of that translates, how much of those uh, strategies will come through when you are playing your Tier 1 games, because there is just a little bit of a different load on uh, like the Malta series, for example, compared to EUL. There's no major spot on the line in those games. Now, we have a little bit of the eyes on here because there's a lot of new possibilities, as I sort of said before, but ITB also impressed. It's not all about how much Fnatic can sort of get themselves the drive. Noah stepping up to a level that was a little bit above and beyond before. Uh, you know, a meteoric comeback against Wolves who struggled yesterday and they sort of had the one to five return with six rounds in a row. They couldn't really get anything going on their attack, whether it was as said in the interview about sort of first round nerves or a uh, first game sort of danger and concern about what it is of why your attack doesn't connect and you're in EUL and oh my god terrifying 
This is their chance to try and prove a different lesson here. I'm actually really excited for this game because, uh, as you mentioned, Fnatic, of course, you know, some, some changes coming through as well, um, not only in organization, uh, but also roster and didn't really play any of the other tournaments, so we didn't really get a you know, good look onto them until they played against uh, G2, which was that 7-8 loss that they suffered yesterday. I2B also made some incredible changes, and with that, you know, found themselves with a first victory against Wolves, with an incredible comeback, which shows that resilience that we often want to see in our top teams, right? When you're 5-1 behind and you just manage to win six rounds in a row after that, that is incredible. All right, ITB, this is the test and this is the taste as given to well it. Ten seconds we remaining. In the interview, the first game yesterday with Coach Angry Kenny. Five seconds to insertion. Uh, him being disappointed. Right in their attacks and their approach, Attackers they're trying to sort of prove the bomb. them wrong. Fnatic themselves, Leon almost off for a bit of a start. Doesn't quite get the gift of the early kill. The E1D will pop out, not really get any true catch, otherwise just retreating players. Yeah, might have just been in there to uh, to buy themselves some sa uh, security, right? To get yourself to the building, make sure there's no moving going on uh, around those windows. With that, finding themselves close. Kenny already knocking on the door of the balcony here. It's not going to be walking in, I would assume, but at least, you know, it's the ramp, so we never really know. A boogie could go through. There you go. Gets crut tossed in right into the sides, and it seems like they're getting at least something in return. Well, Jags is able to find Noah. Talk about how much eyes can be on that player, and he's on early on the first engagement and they haven't been able to get it until now creed gets the follow through but jigsaw gets creed and tyrant gets as a different success stories for them yesterday leon as a demonstration of what can happen to those barricades now if you weren't aware but jigsaw a demonstration of what he can do for you he was able to have a pretty good game in the showing of fanatic the other day but he's one that wants to try and continue that tear on the dock a lot of French ACOG seen nowadays. And I've received them all back again. <laughs> and I mean, it kind of changed the game slightly as, uh, you know, you, you're now either back on a one-time player or you're one that plays from above with a shotgun. Tyron gets that final lockout. But to finish that point, or it's going to be like the people that focus on the, uh, on the uh, optics. And it's, it's like basically return to how things used to be in terms of uh, the optic stuff. First round, went with an attempt of a sort of blitz and smash through, and whether it was just an idea of asserting a confidence, right, from the side of ITB, whether it was a look, if we hit them hard and get this early take, suddenly we might be in this position where we can build on the back of it. It going away from them, but it being a little bit of back and forth, there's still something located by attackers. that you can take away from that as a team. It is. Might be the last thing to learn further and further. Two kills across that round with Tyrant stepping in. Now, Tyrant had a, a pretty poor day yesterday, unfortunately. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I had. Well, a poor start to your season that way is never a great thing, left. especially when you have such a close loss like that. Like, you'll just start thinking like, oh, if I, if I would have just been able to, you know, play a little bit better, we might have been able to make the difference out there. But he starts so strong uh, in this first round. And let's see if he can keep that up. As uh, Fnatic has managed to uh, stall away that first rush attempt to come through. That didn't really work out that well for ITB. The diffuser gets handed over to Azur. Quick opening into Snowmobile Garage just to make sure that there is that rotation opportunity. Camera, of course, will be taken out. Yep. Gives him the opportunity to basically safely use this now. Uh, or at least the defender should be blind without any usage of it. Pretty standard bulletproof to get rid of. Starting a little bit late to react, but this is sort of that classic push that Kenny's going to attempt. If they can get the Maverick burnt here along the wall of prep without being caught from a player above, he might be able to get the free call, but it's most importantly going to pull an important part of the hold away. As soon as this is open, 
just like that, all it has to be, Leon can now not comfortably or safely play that backline position. It is a bit of a heavy strike through. You can still keep the vertical and still try and stop the kit being planted inside itself, but there is now no way to comfortably and directly watch towards this single strike. The kit has been passed and rotated around once again. Now, with the potential of the Capital Bolt, it's Oscar that gets caught. Leon gets one and two, importantly, before Azza gets actually the trade post mortem. But the attempt at the quick strike has fallen away from them. I mean, Leon did everything he needed to do there, right? Like, he stopped that window push, he stopped that diffuser from being used as. We, uh, we just uh, highlighted it there. Stuck in the window frame right now. Still has to go over, pick that up, try again. And while Kenny is quite close, of course, playing around. Oh, it's the worst timing ever to throw a drone. Just as the dropping comes, and Flashbang is tossed in afterwards, but it is going to be the Afnats that blind the player out there as Creed has managed to recover that diffuser. Going back up, Jigsaw missing the opportunity of the first attempt. Taran coming in from the flank will be able to get the trade out onto one. And now it's only up to Creed. In a 1v3 situation, finds himself in a billiard stable, looking to go into stock, but gets shut down. I believe that might have been able, uh, even from the angle that was created by them. I think it was. Or did Deepak just walk back into it from bar? I think that it's either or. I think it might have been the Maverick hole at the end, but either way, this is a fanatic that is starting to show some of those little, little sparks. Remember where this roster was last year and it was a very disappointing place for them to be after the sort of highs the success story of the core of what is now fanatic getting themselves the win at a major losing a couple of players losing a lot of that i'm not going to say the the control that they had over the games because they did have some moments but it was a fall from grace steadily over the year to here now pushing team two to the brink getting themselves two in Especially what a showing so far in this opening two rounds. It's exactly the perfect response he needed to make after what happened yesterday. No, of course, and you know, Tyron is an incredible player and he's shown so over the various seasons that he's played. And, you know, just, just having that one off game at the start, you know, it's, it's just that one time thing. Maybe the first game jitters or maybe G2 really played into a strength there and, and didn't really allow him to get going. But him starting off 4 0 right now, that must be such a confidence booster for him, but also for the rest of Fnatic, who, of course, uh, in the previous roster, were struggling um, with their changes. These ones already seem to be working out way better for them. ITB. Shane Jackson might try and get done here. You've still seen you've got an idea on. There's, I guess, a close to site push. Look at the control that they took last time before they went for the plant oh, no. here. He has a drone in like a missed drone. And he has no idea somebody's tucked. Deepak just in the middle. Here's the bees going, so he doesn't want to take a step too far, but if he can get the quick swing round, as all the pressure's coming up towards the Larian windows, Noah's rotating towards the main side. Deepak and Leon both watching a single window. Now, Leon was removed from his place before isn't caught this time out. So afraid of someone potentially being around a big window though and you know, that would have been a perfect strike out there. It would have really shut him down. Why ITB but nothing really too concrete yet. Still trying to get themselves in on the top floor. Noah saw a head there, didn't fire. Leon will go down in the meantime by Creed's though, as Noah's going for a bit of a bait, hoping to at least get someone into the line of sight. And as Jigsaw is looking to retake the back row, it is Deepak that just swings out, gets the kill onto Kenny, and basically stops any pressure from the trophy side. A C4 as well from Tyron brings it back into Fnatic's hands. There's that awareness of that player coming back to bite them. Deepak waited and held on for as long as he possibly could. Noah. He's about to find a fight in either window as Kreese gets some shoulder of support ducked underneath. Mark Solskjaer is able to slip their way out. A minute left, three versus three, and they're going to have to stop moving for a second as they finally get some vertical control. It's an important part of being able to get the plant down. And you got to see if you can try and get the plant down. And then still includes, obviously, cementing your control when you don't have any hard breach to get any of these walls. So at this point, you can only really do one take, which is on towards the hatch, on towards the kitchen side. 
how aware of Fnatic that this is the limitation put ahead of them. A lot of information being gathered here, and it is the Gemini Replicator that will find a bit of information. Jags, if you would have blown that up, that would have been a kill, I think. But he's playing on Deepex Contact now. He's going to tell him when someone pushes down the staircase as Noah takes a shot from the shotgun. Tyrant will find one. It is another that goes down. Creeks now having to drop in. Is a Tyrant for all three? No, it's Deepak instead to swing it. And Fnatic, a very clean start to their game. Surely a tactical timeout would be called now by ITB. I love that Leon's got the full brand really setup. Really went there. hard with the brand setup. Like he's like, I'm playing for Fnatic now. Bet I'm, I'm just going to change my entire <laughs> room. And I love it. I wish Deep, more Deep X, that. Is that an orange glow from Deepex shelves? There is that just. It is an orange glow behind all those Benelux trophies. Those are all Benelux trophies, by the way. You see there, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Tells you something about <laughs> about his career in there. Loves to be the Benelux. Jigsaw drinking an orange drink. It's all branded. <laughs> is it unbranded? No, it, it's all oh. branded is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all on brand for Fnatic. I mean, they may as well get the synergy, get the get the build on, because the synergy on the team is outstanding. Tyrant, as I said, after two rounds, four kills, exceptional. Six kills, three rounds. It is just, it, you couldn't have asked for a better return to form. We know what he's capable of when he was that sort of star player when he was the potential pickup and the joining of this roster you went okay this is something they can sort of build behind this is a player that they can build they you know, get in jex get in that sort of extra damage potential and the roster itself pretty far removed from where it was once upon a time but it feels almost as weird as it is to say the closest to how it was you've got leon and deepak playing that heavy back line and then Three great guns operating around them. Not that they can't kill, but he's a certified killer. Five seconds to go. Time has actually uh, balanced out his score sheet already. Impressive. Objective he's now on a one bomb. KD. So Fresh has Tyrant in his fantasy team, I believe. He's definitely making some points. He got today. Fresh minus points yesterday <laughs> in the <laughs> fantasy <laughs> league that we are doing for EUL Rainbow Six. Uh, from this series, I just have Jigsaw. That's a solid one now. I don't, I don't bring my bias into the, that as much as I would like to be fresh. It would be very funny in Fantasy League. That cannot be the weight of it. I also want to beat Jesse. Jesse J. Chip. His Fantasy League. Three of so You want to beat the host. I want to beat the host. Three rounds of a Fnatic ITB. Now they quite obviously struggle with their attacks. Yesterday, they were only able to pull one across the six rounds against Wolves and then went back to pull the match. They know it's far from over, but the disappointing thing is if you have a half of your game that isn't able to connect across two play days, that is a very devastating sort of pill to swallow because that is a lot that you've got to work on. And if it doesn't, you know, herald the conversation of what major things do we have to change, it then is the only other conversation of what maps do we have to pull back and try and relearn, refocus. We sort of drive ourselves. They haven't been able to get the first take here. Now they're just waiting to be swung by Jigsaw. Just a quick shoulder check there. Okay, yep, yeah, there is someone on the balcony and still wanting to go for it. And Noah, his attention is really divided as he's getting these flashbangs in, putting his back against the pillar to provide himself with some support. It is the kill for Oscar to come through, though, as he finds the D-pack. Jigsaw follows all by Creed, and suddenly ITB have a bit of an opening here. Gonna get Siren after a C4 does pop off, leaving just Jigsaw and Leon on the back line. Leon cannot quite make the connection with the jiggle peeking door, but they can go for the plant. Oscar just tucked inside the cover of box. I don't know if Fnatic's aware of this, attack, or they're just waiting for this. Jigsaw's rotate! Ooh, the C4! Rotten timing. Now, onside the double window. Gets the, unfortunately, swing round Creed. Pops off as a suffers. But with the entire encircling of this kit, of this hold, ITB, great response after their tech time timeout to get their round. High an angle there from the window as well. And indeed a great response, a quick response as well as they just managed to bring some pace in it, found the weak point on that fanatic hold. 
and just instantly leveraged it into a plant. Play that objective. Don't try and, and, and force the issue there, you know? Don't try and force all the kills to go your way at that point. Let them come to you instead. And with that, they are on the board again. I mean, last time they managed to come back from a 1-5. Not that far removed from another such scoreline. But I'd be, of course, willing to uh, give everything they got to stop that from happening. So, looking to turn this into a 3-3. Pixel was bitterly trying to bite his way back in, but you have to give credit. So what's the rotation? The aggression that was applied towards sorry, Creed's. Look himself in on the roll of the act. Themselves in on those engagements. Sort of led a bit of a charge. Otherwise been missing a bit from ITB's. to go. I'm gonna say entirely fangless approach. Five Still seconds finding remaining. that little bit of sharpness to it. Stretch across the map itself and the bags of kills. Tyrant can be killed. That's a lesson learned. So he was still able to get one before he was taken. Deploying mobile cover. Oh, that was so close to losing his head. He's not going to go for the drop. <laughs> he wanted to go for it at that point. It's just escape with my life. I'm going to play it a bit more. Get it in. Falls over. It's just hunting down some utility mostly. Seeing if you can find any F nets, maybe some goo mines. Anything that will stop an eventual push from really coming to shove. Makes his way all the way over. Oh, almost gets the bulletproof gap, but I believe he got zapped out by the EMP. TB. Took a while to get the first pinch on some of these rounds. Made it count last time. Removing them as they come in, it's might seem like the longest way of doing it, but the DMR is very quick compared to what else needs to be sprayed against those keeper barricades. Oh. It's like nine or ten shots of the DMR, it's like 36 from your assault rifle. Uh, I'm a Twitch drum just stepped out there by the EMP. It's got to make sure that someone's actually going to be picking that one up before they uh, reactivate and still get the zap out. Drones coming in soon, or at least smokes rather. They want to take library under control. Tyrant's still playing out here. How safe is his balcony though? As there is a player out there, that's gonna be the big question. Keep us As he pretty. reinforces himself, he's actually got a bit of a stroll, finds himself picked up by Noah. And the entry kill now for ITB, and that means Mezzanine can fall. That means the library will now fall as well. And they can start pushing their way downstairs as Noah does get picked up from the shield, but Jack's instantly traded out. And ITB now with a two-man advantage. Here it is, ITB again, taking a while to find themselves comfortable to go for that first pitch, but as soon as they do, it suddenly feels like everything collapses away from Fnatic. Leon, gun down inside the site. And remember how this went for them last time they were on it. Two players caught out by Leon on the window, going for a quick plant, and here, the extra time taken to weigh up the options, weigh up the flanks, leads to a very clean result of a round. Two in a row for ITB. Yeah, good show from them after their timeout. Really doing what needs to be done, getting those attack rounds on the board, as that was their main problem with what happened yesterday. Just that single round, they hope to get more. They've done that now. It's still the opportunity to push for a 3-3. With the way that things have been going in the second half of the first half, so the second quarter, is it very possible that they are able to uh, put another one on the board? So we have back up towards the top floor. Of course, last time we saw the uh, the quick entry from Solarium, the plant to follow in afterwards, the cover out there as well, as no one from Fnatic was able to find a real response. We would see a repeat of that. Fnatic. Their lead has built it away. It seems almost unaware of just where the next snap's going to come from. Think about the motions that we've seen from their sort of play jigsaw. Finding new plays and places to cause problems. This time, a swarm beak might be the attempt. There's the potential onto one. How aware are they? The E1D gives some of that awareness, but it's not gifted. Damn was on the board. Uh, 
something we can do that is using it. And it's always interesting to see, we see multiple use of it. One of them is the actual 1v1 hunt down. We uh, sometimes see like the calls being given out by the demos and then sometimes it's just to confirm where someone is. Are they on site? Okay, well, let's cancel it because they don't need to know where I am the entire time as well. So that's the uh, downside, or one of the two downsides on that gadget. Not sure if you can call the pistol a downside though. Six rounder, 44, 80 damage per shot pistol. It's one of the most powerful weapons in the game. It is. It, it does more damage than some DMRs. So is it a real downside you forced onto that? It, that's if you want to spray bullets, but... I mean, even then, it's not the toughest to control. Look at that, though. There's a great demonstration. Obviously, they know where each other is, but the pings from Daymox are a lot quicker. Jigsaw does find Kenny. There is some support, Jags. On the back, I said they like to rotate back in towards the fight. The Tyrant does go down on the back of getting the kill onto Creed's. He might be recoverable because Oscar's still outside. He's prone C4. Doesn't really get... A proper read, the cover of the smoke. As it wants to get the finish on, he fate at this point. There's almost the example, Jax gets caught in Oscar. Well, that's actually just the end of Tyrant. <laughs> Thought it was an insane moment there, but just partially insane. I agree, I was also thinking the exact same. Like, oh, suddenly we're in a two on two. Looking to laugh at the see that was actually the down that was confirmed. Still good drones in position though. A lot of information being given here, knowing that the entirety of Solarium is going to be safe. A flank drone that you could use for that as well. If it wasn't for the fact that they probably want to get a plant on from this side of the map. Put it, but underneath the bed. Just to call it out for the rest of the team, okay? It's just safe. Hazard is playing low. Seemingly aware that someone is right behind the bed. Wondering what he's going to do with that vertical little angle that he's just made. Zazzer wants to go for a plant, of course, but doesn't really have the opportunity. There comes the fire. It's going to be forcing one out. Azer is waiting on the hatch, but misses the opportunity. The slight moment he had to find Jigsaw's on one HP. And they try and shuffle their way in. There's a player just tucked onto the Kiba, and there's a... Well, there it is, Jigsaw. The end of them, they're on one HP, and they yeah, take a bit of a risk. Go. It's now a two versus two. Oscar's going to make the first plant. The impacts are being thrown over Drop towards the them. There's Leon Five seconds getting to the catch of cold kit, and this round is fanatics. But it was closer than it probably should have been when it was just sort of in this five, four versus two. And that's still fanatic. They keep the four to two. But I think they have to make sure that they can keep it a little bit more level-headed going into their attacks. Now, it was an effective 4-2 there. Now going over to the attack, we, we know that's a more difficult site to approach. So what have they prepared? Of course, there's no recent footage of Fnatic and their attacks. There is quite some recent footage from ITB and their shellac. So let's see how that balance is out. Bomb diffuser. Five seconds. Again, ITB have come back from words literally yesterday, so they probably will have that in the back of their minds as well, knowing that their defense is very solid. ITB, how do we set yourself up? As you said, they've been able to come back from this sort of difference before. Uh -huh. Different map, different play space, different danger, almost presented in a different attacking force, because Fnatic had ideas on their attack against G2. It came to a pretty solid hole. Yeah, Wolves just have out struggled the over the two play days. Even with their win today, let's be honest, they won on the back of a final two versus four round. It really should have been Virtus Bros. And it really should have been only what? Two attack rounds, one over two play days for Wolves. It's three, which isn't even that much better. <laughs> Something, <laughs> but it's not much better, that's for sure. Whereas G2, I would say that they're pretty more tried and tested for bow at the minute. Attackers have dropped they, they the came in four from the side, right? So that, that kind of says everything you need to know. Yeah. Some openings being made as well mid-round. Just some slight adaptations based on, you know, where the actual pressure is coming from. As Tyron is just doing some work here on the Twitch drones, pulling out some utility, getting his drones out afterwards, though. 
still information, valuable information that is being handed over to the rest of his team. And if the breach in the meantime on box is being made, Keanu is going to be the most important player to clear together with Creed. He's of course playing right next to the half on near the door. As soon as you manage to get either or, you have the opportunity to move. And as Oscar drops, that's the opening that Fnatic is looking for. Instantly after, Tyron looking to go aggressive up into Solarium. Are they aware if he's pushing in afterwards? No, they're not. And Azer will fall as well. I mean, Tyron is just on a tear. He's trying to find another for his trouble, but he's at least protected and given a second to breathe. So he can reload as the rotation comes in behind him. Jigsaw finds freeze. There's the cover on the Adami. They're going for the plant. The two remaining players give their game and position away. But in this second that he's bought them, Leon's got the plant down. Doesn't matter if you have the vertical, if it's a post plant situation, you've just missed your moment. Noren Kenny ran the numbers and math and came back with, he's got to at least kill Tyrant. Fair play, but prove it was the right call at this point. Jex, Jigsaw, and Leon, they just spread themselves out far, all the way to far. So as soon as a drop might come through here, Jex is going to be on the right end of it, he's hoping. Gets the player, Noah's gone. Defenders have located Kenny, the diffuser. got himself in towards the site, but... Oh, he's going for the clever play here. How close? Well, Leon, it was enough. Perfectly covered. The chair blocked some of that Kiba. Actually, the angle was still there, like... And that's the first round for Fnatic on the attack right away. Not too worried, not too troubled in their approaches. Tyrant gave his life there for that plant to go through as he was held, holding himself up in the bathroom. Taking a fight against two. It was an effective four and two when that plant came down, so... Is your room to think? As we'll get back into it very shortly. I mean, the tactical time I'd already used from ITB, so it's quite literally do or die now, or maybe see if Fnatic will use their tactical time at some point. The cover just just perfect, like so far removed as well. Playing inside of games to cover up for the rotate from blue. It shows you the amount of information that Fnatic have that they're comfortable playing that far removed from the site. Of course, also a danger if that Kiba barrier would have been deployed properly. Um, and the angle couldn't have been found. There's Leon that was playing on the breach. You need 36 bullets to get rid of that. And some reload to go through. Did it work out well? Big attempts. So, jigsaw removed. I mean... He's had a rougher game than he had yesterday. Luckily for him, his teammates have been able to step in. Attackers dropped. Attackers have recovered their diffuser. <laughs> so it's quite funny seeing the kit just tumble. I didn't even know it was animated like that. <laughs> the kit tumble. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know it was physics on it that clever. I thought it just dropped. That's not your favorite. Say it. I haven't really seen it much of no. Opening has been made though. Onto Snowmobile. It's uh, quickly going to be drawn out, see if there's anything out there. Now, of course, last game where uh, we a saw G2 and BDS, we saw Monty Plant, for example, to go through. Not that there is a Monty here. Just saying, Snowmobile takes can be quite successful as well. You know, for the last year, we've seen more wine cellar takes to come through in this site. Paul will force Noah to fall back. Oscar's still around, though, as he finds himself near bar. I'm not sure if he had a pocket jammer with him that he used to uh, disable that phone or if he just turned it off by hand. This Tyrant's hunting against the ping. Is he going to strike? No, he does not. Great will find the kill. That's a double for him. And Fnatic now two men down. Reaching with them. Putting the pressure on towards the site, but unfortunately it's instantly impacted off, and the impact of Jags is off as well. Two versus five, they don't really have any knowledge or control, it's all sort of post-mortem pings, and Oscar's already rotated his way away from it. Epex spraying to go for a pinch on ground already cleared. At this point, pull back to the site. You don't need to stress yourself. You've got a shotgun locked at the bottom of blue stairs. Anything they do is going to be a danger. Freeze is the one loose player left. And well, he is caught out by Deepak. 50 seconds. Some of the damage done vertically, they have at least some hard breach they can do. They've got to go for a trench take here. 
Wall keeper. Looking a bit of line of sight. Deepak just missing out on the opportunity for the Maestro playing on the back there. More flashbangs coming through, but, you know, that's just fun. a fortress that's been built by those Kibas. Difficult to get rid of. Azzer with a double kill, one horizontally, one vertically, quickly after one another. And around back into the pockets of ITB. Bringing to 5-3 in the scoreline. Still behind. Still very doable. Yeah, it's not quite over yet. It's obviously still places to build up. It was more risks that were being paid here by ICB. They were able to, to get the early take. They're making sure Fnatic are well aware it's a game that keeps stepping up in intensity. Tyrant looking down as Creed stepped up massively. Azra as well. Quick plays in, in what is a very dangerous site, especially with Ram on the board. As soon as all of those boards disappear. The confidence is sort of sitting there, and I guess it's helped by the fact you're in a five versus two. You say, yeah, I can, I can sit inside. I've got some keepers. I'm all right. We had some keepers. I believe it was like three set up around there. <laughs> like the other two were uh, <laughs> for the wine cellar plant. Ten seconds left before insertion. Yeah, my, it's, it's a really fun operator. You can build some five. like real fortresses with it. It's like mirror on steroids. Attackers are moving to the I remember when Mirror came out and that was like game changing. Keep it deployed. We Never had anything like that. Mirror coming out changed the, the whole game. Yeah. You can't say that for every operator, unfortunately. But it's actually, probably fortunately, <laughs> if, if every operator changed the entire game every single time. I feel sorry for these pros, just having to relearn the game every single time. <laughs> Leon, very quick in an approach towards the site. Hit by a prox, and he's worried about exactly that play. Kenny was not the one to get the strike. In fact, it was Creed. He rotated his way back ground. Leon didn't have any support. Jigsaw's going to see if he can just find the fight. There's things on the player sat waiting. Is he going to try and go for the free fire? He is, but Jigsaw had the drop and the read entirely on that. That is unfortunately an arrow that hasn't gone where it needs to go, and that one didn't hit it either. The Drax Stingers aren't quite going to get the full damage done. The player can escape. Oscar is surviving there with his life, and indeed uh, the fire arrow being caught up by the magnet. Second one, of course. Uh, the first one, rather, by the window, second one by the magnet. Start coming up with the Trish Stone wall. Pots out no behind the Kiba, but it's probably already something they were assuming. How effective they've been. Of course, now being wasted out by those bullets. That's possible since the latest update since this season. No longer just having to uh, take a hit on your Reloading. explosive economy to get rid of that utility. She was in a lot of jigsaw quite close, but is the top of library stairs clear? That's the main part. Otherwise, it cannot go for the swing. And as Kenny is playing there, the answer is going to be no. Noah preemptively will activate his glasses in case of any flashbangs to come through. I think that's the right call, considering jigsaw has plenty of them. But Kenny is the important factor. He literally holds this whole together out here from the side of ITB because as soon as he falls, suddenly the mezzanines will drop as well. Jigsaw. Does some of the scrape damage to Kenny, but Noah gets the end and the cover, and it's just this constant play from ITB. They keep getting themselves in and around the Fnatic players without Fnatic seemingly ready for that quick response and oh, doesn't quite get the win out there. That was sort of that toss-up fight, a difficult one for Deepak to take, but when you've only got 30 seconds left and you're in a 2 versus 4 you sort of have to take a little bit of a punchy risk. Wonder if Fnatic is going to have a bit of a moment, a bit of a conversation during this to try and tie things together a little bit. Where are things going wrong? ITB, I mean, you've got to give credit to them. They're good at their second half. Left. As another one gets them one step closer. A little smiley face. I think the issue is, uh, is Kreeves being allowed to just roam around freely there, right? Like, Leon fell back after the uh, prox alarm went up. There was no real cover out there. He gets picked up, deals a lot of damage, but he just as well picked up a second kill and still lived out there. And he's got like 12 kills right now, so he's definitely stepping up huge for his team. If they manage to shut him down, hunt him down first. Might find a bit more success later down the round. 
maybe Deimos uh, <laughs> to specifically hunt a single player down for the first time. That is very unfortunate. Creed's impacting right as his teammate walks by, hitting his teammate. And with He's that, just casting himself. himself. Yeah. And I like how I highlight him as being the issue, and if they find him, then... Yeah, and, and he's like, it. I'm the issue. <laughs> Ow. I mean, it's it's not the best, but... You only need, you only need one HP to still run around and shoot people. You know that back in the day, a lot of them, had, like pro players, have turned off their HP bars? Five seconds. Yeah, because it makes you play more careful, and that loses you good fights, rather than if you are very confident in your fight. No, I had a fight. Freeze is one of those players. No, I had a fight. Any HP resetting? Oh, yeah. We well, would go down on purpose, because you got back to 50 HP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd be like, ah, oh, Freeze would run to the other side of a soft, and you'd shoot him in the legs, so he'd go down. And pick him back up, and then he's back on 50 HP. <laughs> I remember that. I've done a lot of that. It's so resetting my teammates. When they have a. They're just playing on site. At it. Well, they see a player leave, but they're not quite in a position to punish them. They have that sort of keen awareness. I'm wondering if they're going to pay a little bit more towards it here. They said it seems like there's frequently a, a second or a third in some cases ITV player that's Change gotten themselves backs. tucked around to a corner of Fnatic's approach. They haven't quite done it expecting. Flores drone stuck between decisions, isn't able to make anything of either unless it was just getting the hatch. Reloading. So terrorist coming out. Waiting for a second there, realizing, oh, that's soft right behind. For a second there, I thought Jigsaw broke the cancel barricade with his uh, gun, but it would be impressive. Okay. Yeah, it would be impressive. It was just a also, yeah, not uh, right. worrying. Ooh, they have a ping on a player that comes the underneath. Deepak sprays towards it, hoping the back of the yellow. You've got Tyrant rotate around the back of Oscar, but it's Deepak. That's the long range fight, and this is a sort of awareness being paid keenly by Fnatic. I said it was the sort of missed moment. Seems like I mean, they need to find those roamers, right? Like, that that's the issue. It's like they're running around, they're getting struck in the back. It's, it, it really hurts you. You want to be focusing on just the site when you go. That is unfortunate for Noah as he jumps through the road. It gets picked up. Creed's looking to go aggressive as Jax will find Kenny. As they're playing in Solarium out here, has a bit of cover onto the, uh, the, the window on the bathroom. A creep being far removed as well might actually warrant a pun to come through soon. Setting Selma. Down for the first time in what feels like a while. YTB being on the back foot. Get themselves level or to keep themselves off that point. Reloading! Third sight pick in the 30 seconds. It's always that pressure, always that <coughs> time. <sighs> Deepak though, tuck, going for the plant. Creed's caught out on a Flores drone. Caught out on a rotate, but Jags getting one. Tyrant getting the flawless end. Solid round coming in there from Fnatic again. Mentioned it. Uh, well, I, I named a different player as the issue, but the, the argument still stands is that, you know, that Roamer, the one who strikes you in the backs, you needed to rate yourself of them first before you could go for a true sight take. And, they did just that, finding Ezra after that Noah as well from the jump through. Another kill to come in on site. And boom, you don't have to worry about it so much anymore. You can just, you know, drone out, get some information. But the RC Roteros do a great job. The exploding drones. Like a bit of panic as soon as that one starts going off. A bit of area denial as well. Forced them right into the gunfight. Tyrant coming in around the back, finding the final kill. And Fnatic now a single round away from making it to another victory. Uh, to a victory. First one, sorry. In the Europe League. Can Fnatic Attackers have located themselves the bomb. set up for a little bit of success here? ITB, unfortunately. Ten seconds the left. difference of them already being on this map point might be one step Five too many. To Strange as that is to say, based on the huge comeback they had yesterday. It'll be that test of, you know, those teams where they play to the whistle, they play all the way to the end. They see where the line is, and they make sure that they don't stop running until they hit it. Not an easy skill to have prep and practice. 
fanatic. They go for the slow and steady take onto Romas once again. What is Kenny ready to play against? Is it just a ram? I think it is. It must be a bugey. So otherwise, it would not be uh, a way as the Damon's actually coming out now. Is it Crete? Yeah, there you go. I, I told you, Damon's for Crete. Said it last Crete. Didn't do it then, doing it now, forcing him back towards the site. Suddenly, he's no longer an issue on that flank. Noah did stick around. He was hoping they would see Crete's ping go down the stairs and just run blindly into it. But I don't think you would hope pros wouldn't get themselves into such a quick death situation. A minute. We've got some control up top. Tyrant's just making sure nobody rotates underneath. They were kind of hoping they would play that loose game again, but otherwise, it's Jags getting Azza as the first find. The spray across the sock, whether it was against that impact or not. Kenny looking to retake a bit of that top floor. It's Jigsaw that will go down from the impact, followed up by the MP7 from Noah. We're going to back to 4-4. Huge one for that round. Putting up from the hatch. Here comes the big E12, starting to open up vertically. That's what the impact was for. No more impacts left though on Kenny, and there is still going to be Bugies left, I believe, on the side. Not actually none left on the side of Jags, so we'll be able to do anything with that. Only a small amount of verticality here to play around. Spots out an elbow, finds Noah. Huge angle coming in from Jags. Caught out on the bottom of blue though. Oscar's able to at least get that swing back around. So then it's the three versus three. ITP, they're not quite done yet. Leans into the fire, pushes against the flash. 50 seconds and they're gonna see if they can try and get themselves blunt and stuck just behind the bookcase shelf itself. They're inside a Fenrir mine, inside the bomb chassis. The rotate comes around. Kenny has the cross angle. Leon wants to stick and play it against, but that C4 is perfect cover for Kenny to get perfect cover onto Leon. 30 seconds. Fnatic looked sure to lock it out. Deepak's gonna see if he can still try and make it happen. What? Jags though, Swapping with back. the triple and the spray onto Kenny, leaving just Oscar to keep them into this. Some damage through the drone hall. Deepak down. It's time to get the player up. Oh! It goes for the fight and the round is his. Fnatic pull their first win here on this split in the new roster, new colors, new team, new energy. Three points. That much felt really good on them there as they played an incredible game and actually, you know, started realizing what the issues were after some of the rounds went away, adapted in the middle of that half as well and found themselves to be successful in the end. The three pointers are theirs and I dare say well deserved. It was a bit of fight, I think it's fair to say, ITB. Still lessons to be learned on their attack side, I'm sure, but it's game two for this roster. There's a lot of places that they can sort of grow and get themselves to. Fnatic as well, things to build beyond, but let's see what the desk has to say about it. Thank you so much, Hap and Flu for all your casting. Today, it was a pleasure to listen to you as always. And yes, a very solid victory for Fnatic to close out our game that puts them onto four points. Looking very good for them, to be honest. Yeah, I think yesterday, you know, it, and if we'd have said to Fnatic or Fnatic fans at the start of the week, you're getting four points from this week, are you happy? They would have snapped your hand off with four points based on the fact they didn't get four points in a whole stage last season. Do you know what I mean? I think much improved. We said even though they lost yesterday, there was learnings to take away, but they could be proud of that performance. And I think we saw that today. Their goods were good yesterday, their bads were bad. Today, they put in far, far, and it's really easy, really simple to say, far, far more good rounds than they did bad. Yeah. And I think it comes down to individual decision making. I think, you know, Leon yesterday, I think made some terrible decisions in the bad rounds and probably terrible calls off the back as he's the IGL. A lot of good decision making from him today. Tyrant had a phenomenal game, and I think they controlled the game more or less in basically every round. Tyrant wasn't alone. Jags had a really good game on top of that as well, right? But what we see from this team that we didn't see last year at all, you mentioned the points, right? Mm -hmm. But they are actually a team now. Yeah. They look like a team. They look like they have solid ideas. They look like they can play off each other. They don't look like a lost bunch of chickens like they did last year, because <laughs> they generally did. They, it, it seemed like whatever game plan that they had yeah. pl planned with their coaches, and whatever game plan they had prepared before matches, it just looked like it wasn't there. And we were hearing so much from the background, like, yeah, they're doing really well in tracks, and they're doing really well in scrims, but that didn't show at all. Now we're hearing they're doing good in scrims, but 
we're also seeing them doing good in the official. And it's the balance of the team, right? I think when you find that you've got that balance within your team, you've got the composition, the roles, the personalities that you want, everybody can just get back to doing what they're good at rather than trying to compensate in different areas across across the map. And I think that's what Fnatic have got this stage. They have clear responsibilities within the team. As yep. you say, it's so well balanced. And that's where you see that, okay, this person is responsible for this and he will play his role out. This person is responsible for that. He'll play his role out. Yeah. And there's no issues. They're trusting each other. They're playing off each other and they're doing it as a group. When you're saying that, it makes me think about what you said about BDS, how they have all these players in their designated role doing what they need to be doing. Yeah. And from what I'm hearing, so for Fnatic, sounds like they have a very well-balanced roster right now, which is yeah. a really reliable win factor for them. Yeah, I think comparing them to BDS maybe is a little bit of a fast <laughs> stretch right now. Yeah. I think they're still a little bit rough around the yeah. edges and still figuring that, that out a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I think they've got a lot of good things, far more good going for them than they've got things that they need to work on. But I just think this is this all of Europe right now, right? Yeah. We can look at, uh, into the breach as well. Sure, they lost this game. But that roster is also looking very, very stable. They're yep. looking very, very good. And the pick up, pickups they've made have made the team more well-rounded. Same with Team Seeker. We saw them as well yesterday. We're it's it's a crazy world where we're starting to think about some of these teams in the context of a major. You know, G2 have had a bad start and, you know, Fnatic picked up four points, G2 have picked up two. That's already put them on a front foot thinking about Manchester. Yeah. Very much open for everyone at this point, even yeah. though we've only been <laughs> two days in. But a player you talked about who had a difficult start yesterday and a way better game today, obviously Tyron. Yeah, and I think genuinely Tyron has, you know, he, he was fourth in play ratings at Six Invitational, right? He's got the mechanical ability to be one of the best players in the world. Tricky day for him yesterday, but I think he really made his mark today. I think in two areas, obviously he had a great personal performance, but I think it's clear to see the improvement that this core and this roster had on the map of Chalet was heavily influenced by the fact that Tyrant brought some of those ideas and ideologies over from Eminem, just as we saw Leaky Fakken uh, use us uh, do for the BDS roster as well. Both rosters, both players that came from Eminem, their teams have won on Chalet today. Huge influence from Tyrant today. We are standing here with an interview with a very special guest as well, because I saw a sneak peek of that. We have Leon with us, but of course you brought someone in as well. Leon, it's so good to speak to you. Yeah. You must be feeling amazing after these points. <sighs> yeah, it's been a long time since I've been on this interview, so I'm very happy to be back uh, winning again and just showing people that we're back, you know, to actually contend for EOL and majors and stuff. So Leon, you've picked up three new players, one in your arms yep. and two on the server. <laughs> Why have you picked up the two players on the server? And number three, how does it feel to be a dad? Uh, I'll start with the latter one. Uh, it feels really good. At first, it was quite hard, um, but he's getting a lot better now. It's bedtime for him after this. So just letting him enjoy the stream a little bit before anything goes on. Uh, and yeah, uh, we basically just picked up uh, Jegs and Tyrant just because of their... One for Jegs is just raw skill and talent and the uh, potential we saw in him when we saw him on uh, Wild. Uh, we knew he was a free player coming up, so we had to give him a trial and to see how he went. And he fits perfectly with the play style and personality of the team. Uh, and then Tyrant, um, again, he was just, for some reason, a free agent. So we just took him. And um, yeah, we just knew he could have a lot of time to adapt and grow from his Eminem days, uh, before obviously being quite rigid. Uh, but now being more of a free spirit and doing what he wants to do, he basically just called most of the stuff on Chalet there, uh, giving me quite a free job to back him up and make plays with him. Perfect. And then I have one more question for you. How does it feel to finally find a stable home in Fnatic? I mean, you guys must be over the moon having been picked up by them. Yeah, um, obviously when Tristan told me the news uh, that they were interested, I was literally just buzzing, running around my house thinking like, wow, okay, this is like, you know, big, big org, big, we've got to make an impression on them. So uh, yeah, I was just very hyped from the start and we're still hyped now. You know, we want to do great things for this org, make the majors, make invitational making them a, a top contender in Siege again. Um, and yeah, they've been great to us, uh, giving us loads of love, support. Uh, you know, we had a boot camp recently as well. They were so nice there and everyone is just really supportive of us. Sounds really good. Definitely love to hear that. Now, I don't want to say it, but you said it. It's been a while since we have an, had an interview with you. Is there anything you want to say to the fans that have been supporting you throughout this entire time? Yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's continued to show us love no matter what happened. Obviously, you know, things didn't go our way last year, but we don't we don't think about that anymore. You know, we're a new team, we're a new roster, everything like that. We focus on this year and this year only. We're making all these events, we're making invitational majors. We want to do the best for everyone around the world who support us, and that's what we're going to do and keep doing. 
Well, that sounds really promising. Well, we won't keep you here any longer so you can go put your newest pickup to bed. <laughs> but thank you so much for spending your time and talking to us. And we'll speak to you again very soon. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Have a good night. Thank you so much. That was very sweet, a very wholesome interview as well. But of course, that means that we have our final interview done. We will send it back to our desk, of course, as well, to talk about the standings. Fresh, if you could please take us through them. Yeah, I didn't think that interview could get any more wholesome if I tried. And obviously, we expected the, the kind of league standings to be very, very close. They're shaping up that way already. I know Secret had an off day. BDS top of the pile. Will they lose that spot at all this stage? It would be, you'd, you'd be a madman to bet against BDS not being top come the end of the stage based on these two performances. But every other UL team picking up points. I know obviously Fnatic are now going to be on uh, four points after that clean victory as well. So they're up there. It's, it's just not quite updated yet. I think very competitive. That's the, the bottom line of this league so far, Fabio. I mean, it's, it's mind boggling. We, we, every team has points. Every team has points. Yeah. That, that's something we usually do not see very often. Like, we've always had those team, two teams or one team that we're like, oh, yeah, they're probably not going to win a game this season, this stage. Already everybody has a point. Yeah, I was on Chaos. I know the feeling. Yeah. And for Secret as well. I mean, they had their off day today. Yeah. They still stay in that very top area of the leaderboard yeah. as well, despite not having played today, not being able to defend that position. Yeah, I mean, it's good for them. I, feel, I was, in a way, I was a little bit upset we didn't see Secret today because I wanted them to come out and... Uh, and, you know, play back-to-back -back because they very much excited me. 